is Women's Health Wednesday now. We're talking about acid reflux, and women are affected more than men. Dr. Shai Posner of Albany Gastroenterology Consultants here now with some important information for us. Dr. Posner, thank you so much for coming in. Well, thank you for having me, Christina. Well, acid reflux definitely affects a lot of people. It's also called GERD. Explain what that is and what the symptoms are. Sure, so GERD is actually an acronym for gastroesophageal reflux disease. Mm -hmm. So what GERD is, is when stomach contents, particularly acid, reflux or squirt up into the esophagus yeah. uh, to cause troublesome symptoms or damage to the esophagus. The risk factors here, there are triggers. Explain some of those for us and what we need to be thinking about. So some of the main risk factors for GERD um, are dietary factors. So we know that certain foods directly loosen that sphincter, that valve between the stomach and the esophagus, promoting reflux. And some of those foods are some of the good things in life, <laughs> chocolate, right. coffee, caffeine. Oh. Um, we also know that alcohol, smoking, fatty foods, those all promote more acid reflux. Pregnancy is another one too, because Correct. we talked about this. Women mm -hmm. are affected more than men. Do we know why? I mean, pregnancy, obviously, but why? Right. So, you know, we are still sort of trying to sort through exactly mm. why this is. Um, we do know that pregnancy is a major risk factor for GERD, and the reason for that is primarily uh, mechanical. So you have a, a uterus that's enlarging, that's pushing on the stomach, right. causing more reflux to happen. Uh, but outside of pregnancy, we also see a higher rate of GERD in women more than men. Um, fortunately, although we see an increased risk of symptoms, we see a decreased risk of actual damage to the esophagus, things like esophagitis, so esophageal ulcers, and changes to the lining of the esophagus, such as Barrett's esophagus, which can promote a risk of esophageal cancer. Mm. So how do you know when it's time to go see your gastroenterologist, and, and what are the treatments? So we are interested in seeing anybody and everybody with bothersome reflux symptoms that they're concerned about and want to discuss their symptoms and the best approach to management. Um, Typically, the most common symptoms that we look out for are heartburn and regurgitation. So regurgitation is feeling the sense of food coming up, particularly after you eat. Yeah. Uh, but the nerve endings in the esophagus aren't very intelligent. Um, GERD can present in lots of different ways. Uh, people sometimes can sense reflux with ear pain, throat pain, ear pain, chest discomfort. Um, what about in the back? I've heard that as well. Is that possible? That is possible. Yeah. Something, particularly the upper central back. You know, really, you name it. Um, it's theoretically possible that it's a symptom of reflux. So endoscopy is the way you diagnose this, where you've got a tube going down. Can you explain that a little bit? Sure. So. Uh, Typically, we start with lifestyle modifications and sometimes medications, but when those fail to completely eradicate symptoms or if there are additional concerns uh, from the patient, particularly if a patient's complaining of trouble swallowing or something getting worse over time, mm. then we do want to do an endoscopy. So an endoscopy is a very, very safe procedure, which we do in our office, um, in our surgical center, yeah. um, where we get the patient to sleep. Uh, and then we take a look with a camera scope. It's about the width of my finger. We go through the mouth, take a look down the esophagus, stomach, and into the first part of the small intestine. Really taking a look around, we're able to see if there's any evidence of damage from acid reflux. We can characterize the anatomy. So is there a large hernia at the, at the bottom of the esophagus that may be promoting reflux? And of course, we can monitor for any of these precancerous changes right. there at the esophagus. And then you can get to those treatments once you know what you're dealing with and just sometimes changing your diet can be a, a way to stop this. That, that is yeah. true. You know, so the first step is always to try to maximize dietary and lifestyle modifications. Right. Thank um, you so much. You're very welcome. We appreciate you coming in. Great information. And we'll have this for everybody online. And, of course, you can find all of our Women's Health Wednesday stories online. Just go to News10.com. And we'll be right back. You're watching News 10 ABC, your local news leader.